Next on Funny Local News, Fashion Week, the National Aquarium, woman struck by lightning speaks, all of this and more. But first... Now. And here at the range. It's early morning in Washington, D.C., and it's not a good start to the day for White House correspondent Amory King. Good morning. President Reagan is thinking about changing his itinerary for his trip to Asia next month, and that might include cancellation of his visit to the Philippines. Emory King is at the White House this morning. Emory, has the White House more or less set the stage to scrap the trip? Hey, how do I know, Connie? Okay. Oh, my God. I'm very sorry, Connie. Good morning. So that uh, person may have opened another whole new worm of cans, I mean, a whole uh, can of worms for this whole investigation. It's nearly 8 o'clock, and meteorologist Howard Shapiro is addressing the main item on this morning's agenda, fishing. Big fishing tournament going on here this weekend. We'll be explaining coming up in a few minutes, so we'll see you then. That should be fun, watching uh, Russell wet his uh, rod in the uh, water. <laughs> 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 fishing. Hey, I'm uh, taking a look outside you know, what we've got today. <laughs> <laughs> He's just fishing. <laughs> we got lots of clouds, lots of sunshine, and lots of afternoon storms. He's just going fishing, guys. Oh, boy. Pretty much everywhere, it's going to be hot. Shut up. Man, I don't need a jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Arthur. As part of his role as chief weathercaster, Steve Poole has been asked, at short notice, to somehow hold on to something. Yeah. It's okay. Everything is fine at the fair. We're getting along great down here, Dan. Kathy, back Yeah, to just you. don't go get a bacon burger or anything like that, Steve. No. Hey, oh, this is... Steve? Yeah, you <laughs> should have brought that up. What happened? Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> you got to be careful. We'll That's see okay. you later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, Sloan Brown has a... You can see her in the background. She, unfortunately, is on crutches tonight, so she is... <laughs> <laughs> Sloan Brown fell down. Back outside, it's a different day altogether. And somewhere with other broadcasters, anchor J.C. Hayward is at an iconic event. news trying to slim down but you just can't do it metallic a uh, metallic health news is next meanwhile inside anchor sherry kurtz is at the desk in the newswatch studio the accident happened on interstate 35 one half mile south of eagleville 28 year old michael brady of white bear minnesota was driving his car southbound on i-35 on i-35 on Interstate I-35. Um, his car hit head-on with... On I-35, his car hit... His car hit southbound, the northbound lane of I-35. National elections for the recently... The recently reunified country are scheduled for December the 2nd. Elsewhere in the control room, things have now moved beyond potential weather to potentially, genuinely bad luck. A Boise, Idaho woman is considered a medical miracle. Laura Esterman was struck by lightning nearly a month ago, and she was considered officially dead. Thankfully, CPR from her mom revived her heart, but she laid in a coma for two weeks, and then she defied all odds and woke up. I, 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 I should buy a Well, obviously, there was a problem with that tape. She doesn't really sound like that. She doesn't remember the accident, but the evidence is clear. I am so sorry. Laura's learning to walk again after the lightning burned her legs. And we'll have more on that story and hopefully get that tape fixed for you. 
Sweetwater police say they welcome some of the panel's recommendations, but money will be a key factor as to whether or not they'll be implemented. But one thing money can't buy is your mama. She's for free and everybody knows it. It's been a long day, but by the end of it, money reporter Don Dunwell is a particularly busy man. And with a look at how things are going this year, money reporter Don Dunwell is live at Shillitoe Wright's downtown store. Don? Go, Don. Stand by. Go, Don. Well, apparently we're having some audio trouble. Don, can you hear me at all? All right, Don, can you hear me now? Uh, apparently not. I've got okay. To... All right. Well, students, basically, and... Uh... In Mason, Ohio, there's fear tonight that Don? this Christmas may be the last one some residents Don? have jobs for. Jeff Hirsch tells us why Don, and what's been done to prevent all? that. This rusty pair of railroad tracks may not look like much to you, but Don? to industries in Mason, it's a lifeline. Hold on. But soon that lifeline may be cut. Great news regarding Bill's tight end, Kevin Everett. He moved his arms and legs today. And doctors now believe that's the wrong, that's the wrong video, by the way. That is not the right video. It's a new day, and for morning anchor Melanie Moon, a day that already feels very much like Monday morning. Now for an update on the conditions around the Fayetteville area and Springdale, we go to Gary James. He's outside the Channel 29 studios with the latest. Gary? Can we go to Rogers now? I think, I think now we're going we're to go to Rogers first. Melissa Moon is outside the studios up in Rogers. Here now Melissa joins us with the latest up in Rogers. Melissa? Crap. Some bit of problems right now. Let's uh, go now. We'll be back right after this message. Stay with us. So it's falling? What's going on? Right after the break, we're going to interview Eric Weihenmayer, who climbed the highest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. But he's gay. I mean, he's gay. Excuse me. He's blind. So we'll hear about that coming okay. up. Okay. Down on the newsroom floor, anchor Michael Scott can never be sure what's coming next or exactly where it's coming from. Can I find this in Arlington? Oh, good grief, yes. Oh, boy. Uh, let me, let's see how long it is. Let's hold okay. it out. This I'll guy this is uh, probably close to five feet. Texas rat snakes are going to be one of the largest snakes that you find in the Metroplex area. What the f***? Get this thing off me, man. Get this thing off me, man. God dang. What is this thing jumping at me for, man? He likes you. Yeah, I can tell, man. All right, let's try to get back under control. <laughs> You're going to tell me this thing jumped? Well, oh, God dang. Almost, almost. Okay, let's try to get our composure here. You're all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, the Texas rat snake can be up to five feet long, huh? That's right. Uh, some of them can get upwards and approach seven feet. Back here live at the Waterfront Village with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. You're looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're a great zombie. And good times here at the Waterfront Village. Later in the day, it's evening, and Washington, D.C. anchor Jim Vance is hard at work. This is Fashion Week over in Paris. The latest fashions are on the runway for next spring. But there was a problem out there today. One of the British designers' shows had a difficulty. A model fell down twice. That's her going down once. The young woman wearing that pink skirt and the orange platform shoes never quite recovered after that. There she goes again. <laughs> That had to hurt. That was uncool. That's embarrassing. This is at least the second time. <laughs> well, you all are just really tickled by that, aren't you? You try walking in those shoes. Hey, first of all, baby, I got enough meat on me that it's all right. George. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Come on, we, girl. we want to hold apologize. On, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I 
You want me to be a boy? Wait for me. Oh, oh, you're a dog. Oh, he lives to do that to me. <laughs> a radiator hose turning a factory into a shrine. And how much should a girl pay for great jeans for her baby? She wants a man. One man wants a million dollars. I didn't mean that. <laughs> Meanwhile, up in Boston, co-lead anchor Jack Williams has some good news to share. Here's a story you may not believe. A University of California Medical Center team has successfully removed a 200-pound ovarian tumor one yard in diameter from a 30-year-old woman. Physicians said that the tumor had been growing since the patient, who was not identified, was 15 years old and asked a doctor about an enlargement of her stomach. The doctor told her she was eating too much and put her on a diet. A seven-member team removed the benign tumor. After four and a half hours of surgery on May 24th, the patient was released from the hospital this week and said it's the first time in years I've been able to cross my legs. <laughs> Some of the folks getting ready to kick off the festival. It's hard to say those lines this time of day. Over in Baltimore, it's the morning edition. And time for Coffee with Anchors, Don Scott and Marty Bass. Coffee with this day. We're going down to National Aquarium, of course. Uh, uh, big doings going on. Last weekend, they reopened up the Coral Reef Tank. The sharks are back. Well, let's face it, we're talking one of the East Coast premier attraction that went down for about a year. What was it, a year and a half? For, uh, yeah. for, for scheduled maintenance. And let's face it, the thing was built 10, 11 years ago, and the technology's completely changed. So, uh, live to the National Aquarium, inside the coral reef tank. Good morning, who are you? Hello. Good, mor good morning. Good morning. What's Wh your name? Bob. Hi, Bob. <laughs> does the last name come with that? It does, Arrington. Ah, oh, Bob Arrington, uh, nice to meet you. And you. Now, how are we doing this exactly, Bob? Marty, I can hear you only on one part of my breathing cycle, so when I'm inhaling, it's easier to hear you. All right. How are we exactly doing this? Wait, wait, take wait, two. We have to figure out which part of his breathing, breathing cycle. cycle. <laughs> All right, wait, wait. How are we doing this, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> We're not doing this well. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. When, do, when do we talk, now or when you're blowing bubbles? <laughs> Bob's respiration's fine, by the way. We're, we're gonna do, Kelly Lindstedt and Megan is ready to do a health watch on this. Hey, Bob, can you hear us? I can now. Okay, how are we doing this? <laughs> Bob, how are we doing this? I'm trying to get his breath. I understand. <laughs> you better you give it a shot. Hey Bob. <laughs> tell us tell us about the exhibit. Take about a minute and a half. <laughs> Not a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> okay. Oh. All right, tell you what. But I can hey Bob, can you hear us now? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, Bob, don't breathe. <laughs> hey, Bob, can you hear us? Now, how are we doing this, Bob? How's this set up? <laughs> uh, 
Alin lagi Bob. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Let's go, great, Jim. <laughs> now we know why no man has done this before. It's <laughs> great. We're gonna stick with this long. Hey, Bob, how are you? Can be Bob. How are we doing this, really? Bob doesn't have a clue. Hey, Bob, how are the fish today? <laughs> All right. Um, but, hey, Bob, can you hear us now? I think Bob is having trouble with the volume, obviously, and, and the breathing cycle is something else. Okay, uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, this is great. Bob, we're gonna try this again, buddy. Tell this hill to Bob. All right, we're gonna take it. You wanna take a spot and arrange this? Here's what we're gonna do, because we're not gonna waste this. We're gonna throw it to a commercial break, and we're gonna come back, have this figured out, because this could be a great live shot. I think Bob and Alice will have some great laughs here coming up. I think Bob ought to throw it to the break. All right, <laughs> tell you what, stay with us, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Tonight, a 7.2 magnitude, magnitude earthquake rattled Alaska's seismically active Aleutian Islands. It was magnitude 7.2. <laughs> It was a very large earthquake. <laughs> the good thing is, there were no immediate reports of any damages or injuries. So From that magnitude. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in Baltimore with Doctor of Veterinary Medicine Kim Hammond on deck, another thing is about to happen. He's in control over there <laughs> on the news. So High five. High five. Oh. It's, Hi. It's for you. This is, of course, Dr. Kim Hammond and his, his friend Mikey. Mikey's this like a, a toddler on crack. This is, my, <laughs> this is Mikey. And I have to tell you, you know, Mikey is, is an emissary for our lakes and our oceans and some of the... Uh-oh, I'm oh. losing my chair now. A rapidly Mikey. disappearing um, ecosystem. And, and, you know, Mikey can come to your house and you can go see him. Hold on, yes, Mike. Don't you want oh, Mikey in your house, you, everyone? You know, he'll come for a visit and he'll teach your kids a little bit. You can call the Falls Road Animal Hospital. They'll give you the name, but it's okay, the company's oh, called right. Party, Party oh. Safari. All right. All right. What are you oh, doing? What's ooh, down not, there? Ooh, oh. Don't pull all, right. all the wires. Oh, boy. Okay. So anyway, we're actually going to try to get to some questions. It's a little difficult. It's a little distracting. Not too much, you know. <laughs> Why? Just a little. <laughs> this is a normal day in the Hammond household. Right. <laughs> Let's try to get to a question. This is from Roy. My cat's High diet five. consists of dry food and a treat of some moist cat food in the mornings. Right. He gets sick on occasion. The result looks like oh. he didn't even swallow or chew his food. Should this be something to worry about? No, it's not something to worry about, but you should definitely pursue that. And if, you know, sometimes well, with cats, when they get mm -hmm. sick, we use, you know, it's hair related or it's right. eating too fast or it's too rich mm -hmm. because the cats can throw up normally. So maybe use a little hairball medicine, give smaller portions, that okay. kind of stuff. All right, I'm a little, I'm a little lost now. Non plus, now okay. Mikey just got my scripts a little messed up. But I think our next question is from Sherry. Okay. Is that right? Okay. Oops. Okay. Great. No, 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 Great. No, no, no. Sherry says, I adopted a setter mix from the shelter after she okay. had been home right. for Hold a few on, months. Down. She became very itchy and lost clumps of hair. It resolved itself, but now three months later, it's back. Any okay. recommendations? Oh, oh, yeah, definitely, computer, definitely. The recommendations are go to your veterinarian because it could be a mange <laughs> problem or it could be an allergy problem. And it's absolutely something that can be taken care of, but you have to diagnose it. <laughs> Here's to the news. <laughs> Mikey, I need these. Okay. All right. Mikey, can we go to the next question? I'll read it off the screen. <laughs> Maybe Mikey what? will read it. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Okay, this is from... Uh, Jay Hillier, right, our dog was down. diagnosed with a ruptured knee ligament. Sit. Could you yeah. please talk about the procedures to correct it? Oh, you know, ruptured knee ligament's really simple. It's all surgery, and it's and depending on the type of the ligament, you know, sometimes a specialist has to do it, sometimes your veterinarian can do it. But basically, they go in there and they repair it, just like they repair a human ligament, and your your dog can come back almost 100%, depending on how much injury there is all to right. the knee. Will you let me know the next time Mike, Mike is doing it? I will be calling in sick <laughs> By the way, what page are we on? <laughs> I, I... <laughs> All right. You can email your question to pet questions at the WBAL channel.com or you can visit our website. <laughs> or you can send us your question. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Bye, Mikey. <laughs> we gotta go. I'll see you later.
<laughs> okay. Thanks so much for stopping by. Dr. Kim. Pleasure. I will talk to you later. All right. We'll be right back. On the New York Stock Exchange, prices were lower despite a late rally. <laughs> the trading was very active. <laughs> Ed Berger's coming up in just a few moments. The Dow Jones Industrials closed down nearly two points. An average share of common stock gained four cents. More than 37 million shares were traded. <laughs> well, I got it. Tonight, our money reporter Ed Berger is prepared, I think, to talk turkey on inflation. Ed? <laughs> Tony, uh, you know, the current inflation problem has made it very difficult to get any bargains. Now, it seems appropriate. Here, here. here let me that. You. Uh, Now's the time to plan a canoeing trip on beautiful Duck River <laughs> for your family church group or, or scout troop. <laughs> Three scenic trips are offered by Voyager Canoe. A two-hour trip, a six-hour short overnight trip, or an easy two days. Your trip can be very exciting or quiet and peaceful. With each canoe, there are two paddles. <laughs> Two lives. Let's run it all the way back. Let's run it back. Whew. I can't, I can't do it with Joe in here, I'll tell you. Go ahead, go ahead, man. Go on. Now is the time. Hey, Joe, you're going to have to leave right there, man. <laughs> Do you, are they going to roll it back? Or? Now is the time to plan a canoeing trip on... <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it, really. you got to do it. you got to do it, Joe. <laughs> Joe, you're going to have to leave. Carl, jump in there and do it. Now is the time to plan a canoeing trip on beautiful Duck River for your family, church group, or scout troop. Three scenic... <laughs> can't, can't, I can't. <laughs> we can't. We can't. Five minutes. It's a lot of fun, folks. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, no. no, you're going to have to do something. I can't make it. I've already done it. Carl, you tell him about it, Carl. This has been the Carl Tipton Show. <laughs> John, I think uh, Joe Rowe Hilliard is around the corner now, so I think we can go ahead with our commercial. Don't you think so? <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Friends, <laughs> don't try radio and, and TV announcing. Friends, <laughs> now is the time to plan a canoeing trip on beautiful Duck River for your family, church group, or scout troop. <laughs> I tell you what, I just, how about a good song? <laughs> Can't they roll it back, really? Yeah. I tell them about it every day on the radio, but I want you to do it here in our set, huh? Oh, yes, you can do it. You can do it, John. I'll get out of the road. So are you, John. Friends, now is the time to plan a canoeing trip. <laughs> Meanwhile, elsewhere in Virginia, the amazing Kreskin has arrived at Colonial Avenue Studio in order to be taken seriously. 
He's found his hidden paycheck stuffed in a turkey, among other places, without any assistance. You may have seen the amazing Kreskin on late night television showing off his mental feats. He's performed for royal and presidential families and has written several books. And now Kreskin is visiting the Star City for a performance in the Roanoke Valley tomorrow night. The amazing Kreskin joins us now for a preview of his show. And we thank you so much for joining us. You are such, I have to say this, I said this to your producer, you are such a lively person. You've got a never of essence. And you, oh. know, you know what you're like? You're like the bubbles <laughs> on champagne. Well, that's and, wonderful. And, and I really, and you're, by the way, your weather guy, he's dingy. I mean, he's a character. We won't go into that. I didn't, I didn't tell him, I didn't uh, tell him to right. say that, Patrick. I was reading his thoughts, I was trying to read his thoughts. What an experience that is. <laughs> Well, you're, nice pretty, you're, you're pretty amazing yourself, and you're a mentalist. Explain to well, the viewers what a mentalist is. It's been 10 years since I've been here in Roanoke. So, you know, I'm at the, at the uh, Roanoke uh, Civic Center Auditorium tomorrow night at 7.30. But, uh, it, it, in fact, the last time I was here was for the governor of the state. He came uh -huh. all the way, and it was crazy because I came in one year late. It turns out the year before I was supposed to be here, I ended up at an airport in Pittsburgh and spent the entire day with a blizzard. Does that not sound familiar this that, year, the way yes, the weather's going? Yes, we've experienced it all year long. But you know, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a fortune teller or a psychic. My work, Melanie, deals really with the mind. I, I perceive people's thoughts. I, I will often reveal details in their life. Tomorrow night, people sitting in the auditorium, they could be in the far back. If they can hear my voice, and I can perceive, if they're concentrating on a question or something, I can usually perceive it and develop it and give them uh, an answer to where they were maybe 30 years ago. Uh, I was just at the university, I was at West Point uh, just a few days ago. Gentleman in the audience, he was the only person his family didn't know his auto registration number. He knew it uh -huh. by heart and I was able to perceive it. And you were able to read it off. Read it. In, as he had it in his mind. Now the check thing, that drives me crazy because Robin Leach, you know, hid. When he came to my house the next day I said, Robin, do you want to try this? He said to me, well, if it doesn't work, we won't show the tape. I said, listen, I did 88 Carson shows. I want it shown even if I failed. I went to Central Park, got in a limousine, and he was hiding somewhere in the city of New York. I found him 41 minutes later. Wow. That's crazy. That is amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> and you have... A demonstration for us? I'm going to try something with you. We okay. didn't prearrange anything, did we? Did we did not. Nothing. That's and she's walking around, and I think everybody's saying, what in the world am I going to do with you? Yes. We, this is an it's purely an experiment. Okay. And uh, in fact, the folks at home, Melanie, might like to try this because this is live. You're going to put down, if you put down your pencil, you're going to hold this coin in maybe a way like that so that if you relax your fingers, it can fall easily. You see what I mean? Okay. Now, to save time, and I'm not going to use a, uh, 52 cards because it's going to take a bit of time. If I can show, and viewers at home, if you have some object that's small that you can hold between your fingers, Melanie, let me show you, which is our close-up camera? You maybe tell me right over here. Right here? I've got the uh, the ace through ace all the way through jack queen and the king is over here you can see that now melanie i'm going to ask you to close your eyes so that you don't see what i'm going to do but so the viewers can and i'm going to show a close-up you folks at home can see that i have an x on the back of one of these cards now, i put it with a felt tip pen, tip pen actually i did it a couple days ago now i haven't shown the card so even if you folks at home are doing this you don't know what card it is melanie all, you can open your eyes now. All I did was show that one of these cards has a heavy X on them. Okay. You don't know the card. Right. Hold this between your thumb and first finger like this. Okay. Now about like that. Now lightly. In fact, relax your finger so it starts to move a little bit. Okay. Very soft. Now hold it over the glass. Now Melanie, listen to me. And the viewers at home may try this as well. I'm going to start to name the various hearts in the deck. Somewhere along the line, that coin is going to drop. Don't try to guess where you're okay. going to drop it. It's going to drop when I name the card I marked, even though you don't know the name of that card. Okay. All right, now concentrate as you relax your fingers. I'll say it in a mixed up order. I'll say five of hearts. I'll say ten of hearts. And I'm not looking at her so that she can react perfectly naturally. Mm -hmm. Jack of hearts. King of hearts. Three of hearts. Two of hearts, eight of hearts, queen of hearts. And what you should be doing, Melanie, is to start to relax your fingers. Five of hearts, six of hearts, 
seven of hearts. Ace. No, you don't stop it from falling. You felt it start to drop, didn't you, at one point? Right? I have to cut you off here because we have to... No, no, wait a minute. Uh, let your fingers relax because let it drop whenever you feel like okay. it. Two of hearts. Seven of hearts. Queen of hearts. Six of hearts. Four of hearts. And you shouldn't resist. You should let it drop when you feel like it. Ace of hearts. Six of hearts. The king, the jack, you should be letting it relax by itself. The ten. I hate to let you... Now, I've never had this happen in my life. All you have to do is to relax and let a, a, a coin fall. I mean, uh, you're resisting. Don't resist. Just a two. It could be a two. It could be a four. It could be a seven. It could and we'll be have a to jack. Go to the weather right now. Yeah. Let All right. We'll see it tomorrow night. I ask. Yes, it's going to be at the Roanoke Civic okay. Center. All I ask you at, at, yeah. at the auditorium. This is the first time in all the years of television. This is ever. All you had to do was to let a <laughs> too, coin too much relax pressure. like this. You see, all you had to do is see how easy to let you to let go of it. You could not separate your fingers. It was impossible to do it that. Was was it? <laughs> well, while they're working that out, we're going to check out the weather. In fact, I might get Chris going to come over here. At, in, fa I, in fact, I dropped my pencil a couple times during that. I don't know which card he named, but at any rate, <laughs> we're going to go outside and show you what is a wonderful day out there. It's a good day to be working on uh, some arts and crafts outside. There, the coin fell. I heard it fall. He must have gotten the card the correct.